In this video, I'm going to teach you how you can calculate yield to maturity and explain what this term actually means. So let's start by looking at a simple example. So imagine we've got a bond that's a $1,000 bond and it's a five-year bond and it's going to pay 5% interest semi-annually. So that means two payments per year. Now, when you think about this, you've got a $1,000 bond, you've bought it for $1,000 at its issue price, you're going to receive 5% payment each year. So that means in the first year, you'll receive $50. The second year, you'll receive another $50. That's assuming that you're not using your interest to buy more bonds. Then in the third year, you'll get another $50. Fourth year, a further $50. And then in the fifth year, you'll receive yet another $50. Then, assuming that the company hasn't went bankrupt and all is going well, the company will then repay your bond and you will receive $1,000 when the company pays off that bond. If we add this all up, this would mean that you would receive a total of $1,250 after you've bought that $1,000 bond and held it all the way to maturity. That's when the company buys it back. And as a result, you'll have made $250 profit, which in this case would be basically 5% per year. This is a nice simple case where you've actually bought the bond for its issue price. However, in reality, in the bond market, you may be paying more than $1,000 to buy the bond, or you may be paying slightly less than $1,000 to buy the bond. It's unlikely that unless you're buying it from the issuer, that you're going to actually pay exactly $1,000. So let's look at what could happen if the price was a little bit different. So let's say you're doing the same bond, but this time you've got a good price, perhaps, of $900. So you've paid less than 1000 So in this case, you're still going to get all these $50. You get five payments of $50 because the 5% is based on the $1,000 face value of the bond and not the 900 So you're getting a slightly higher yield. But then something else happens. At the end of the five years, assuming that the company hasn't blown up and nothing bad has happened, you'll get your $1,000 back, which is the face value, though technically it's not your $1,000 because you only paid $900, but the bond was issued $1,000. So you'll receive $1,000 when the bond matures, which in effect means that you've made a profit of $100 because you paid $900 but got paid back $1,000 and then you also got all these interest payments. So in total, you've received $1,250 but only paid $900 for that bond. As a result, you've made a profit of $350. So you've made more money and therefore your profit is going to be greater than 5% per year. Now, when I show you how to calculate yield to maturity, you'll be able to work out exactly how much more than 5% and put a number on this. But for now, we're just going to say that if you buy a bond for less than its issue price, you're going to likely, assuming nothing goes wrong, you get all the payments on time and you get the bond bought back at full price, you're going to make more than what the coupon rate is. And we call these discount bonds. We can have another possibility, which is what we call a premium bond, which is a bond where you pay more than its face value. So let's imagine that you've got that $1,000 bond. It's five year, 5% as before, but this time you pay $1,100. So you've paid more for that bond. Perhaps interest rates have changed and 5% is a really amazing interest rate. And so bonds start being priced a little bit higher. So let's look at the cash flows. So again, you're going to get all your $50, assuming the company pays on time as expected. Then you're going to only get $1,000 when the bond is paid back. So in a sense, you've lost $100. So you paid $1,100 for it, and then you only get $1,000 back. So again, you're still getting $1,250 in total. But remember, you already paid an extra 100 right at the start at zero years, assuming you've got five um, full year payments left. And so as a result, for holding this bond all the way to maturity, you're going to receive a profit of $150. So this means that your return is actually less than 5% per year. And when we look at the formula for calculating yield to maturity, you'll be able to work out what your actual rate of return is if you held this bond that you've bought for more than its face value for the entire time. So fundamentally, the question we want to answer now is what return do you actually earn? If you don't pay exactly the price that the bond is issued at, what is your real return? And the answer is going to be the yield to maturity. And I'm going to teach you how you can calculate that. 
to actually calculate the yield to maturity, you're going to have to use some formulae. So let's look at the formula that you're going to use. So the yield to maturity can be defined as this formula, and this is the simplest and fastest way to do the calculation. So we need to understand what each of these letters means to be able to use the formula. So C is going to be the coupon. That's going to be in dollars. Don't use the percentage. So in our previous example, that would have been the $50. You've got the face value, that's what the bond is issued at. In our previous example, that would be the $1,000. Then you've got the price, that's what you actually pay for the bond that might be more or less than the face value or exactly the same as the face value, depending on what price you actually paid for it. And then N is going to be the years to maturity. This formula here is a quick and easy way of doing the calculation, but it should be noted that this is what we call an approximation formula. It gives a really good answer. So if you're not too bothered about whether the true answer is, say, 5.5, um, 5 5.6, 5 5.7, you know, within that range, it's probably going to give you a decent answer. If you want something to eight decimal places, this is not the formula for you. And I'll mention at the end of the video how you can do the exact calculation. But for now, this formula gives a really good approximation as long as you don't have huge discounts or huge premiums. The other thing to note about this formula is that it assumes sending me annual payments. That means you get two payments per year, which is true for the vast majority of bonds that you can buy. So let's look at an example of this formula being used. So we've got previously the simple example of a $1,000 bond, so that's its face value, five years, 5%, 5 and you pay 1,000. So you pay exactly what the face value is. So let's look at how that matches up with the terms in the formula. So the coupon is going to be $50, that's 5% of our 1,000. Then we've got a face value of 1,000. The price of 1000 so these two in this case are the same, but they won't always be the same. It's only when you pay the issue price that they will be the same. Then you've got N equals 5. That means that there's five more payments to go on this bond in terms of annual total payments or 10 payments in total, but we're going by the number of years, so that's why we're using 5. Then we need to look at how this matches up with the equation. So what I've done is I've color-coded the different parts of it and we are going to match them up to our list of all of the different variables. So we've got the colors matching up. So what I'm going to do is replace each of those letters with the corresponding number. And you can see instantly how the colors match up. So I'm just replacing all of those numbers and I get this expression here. What you then do is start simplifying things. So we can see that we've got 1000 minus 1000, so that's zero. So all of this fraction here is just going to be zero. And then we've got 1,000 plus 1,000, which is 2,000, divided by 2 is going to give you 1,000. So we're simplifying all of this right down to just 50 over 1,000, which will give you 0 0.05. And if you wanted that as a percentage, you're just going to times that by 100. So you've now got 5%. And this, of course, is completely unsurprising based on our previous calculation. You've seen before that this is going to give you a 5% return because you're paying the issue price. You don't have any of the premium or discount effects. Let's now move on and look at what the calculation would be if you paid a slightly different price. So for example, we've got that $1,000 bond, but this time we paid 1,100. So we bought it above its face value. So we've still got a coupon of $50 because the 5% is calculated on the 1,000. Face value doesn't change. That's the issue price of the bond. Then we've got our price is 1,100. That's what has changed. We're going to assume that there's still five years left on the bond. So you might have bought it very shortly after issue where the price, for example, shot up in the first few days of trading. So you still have all of the payments left. So let's look at how that changes the calculation. So we've got all of these variables here. What we then would do is substitute as usual. So we've got 1,000 minus... Uh, 1,100. So we're going to get a negative number in here. So it's going to be minus 100 divided by 5, which is going to give you minus 20. Then you've got 1,000 plus 1,100. And that is going to simplify to 950 when you divide by 2. So we can simplify this down like this. Be careful with this sign here. So remember, this is giving you a negative number, so this plus is going to change to a minus. So effectively, the overpayment that you've made, you've paid more than the face value, that is detracting from your return. So you've got a negative there. That's bringing the yield to maturity down the way. So then we do that division. You get this value times it by 100. So you get 2.86%. So you can see by paying $100 above 
the face value, it's brought your return right down, but you still are making a profit. You're not paid so much for the bond that it's putting you into loss-making territory, but it's brought your return right down. We could then look at the flip side, which is where you pay less. And again, we've got the same variables except for the price is now 900. So we could do the calculation again, and then we substitute in all the values. The difference this time is that when we do the 1,000 minus 900, that's going to give plus 100. So we're going to have a plus out here as well. So we simplify this down. Instead of subtracting from our yield to maturity and making it smaller, we are adding more return. So we've got a plus here, and then we end up with this value. When you times that by 100, you get 7.37%. And I said earlier that this is an approximation, but actually... When you do the full calculation, this is only 0.04% roughly out. So it is a really, really good approximation. And realistically, you're probably not bothered about a difference in return of 0.05%. Other factors are going to be far more important. So let's briefly mention how you could do this calculation if you had very uh, high requirements and you wanted absolutely the exact answer. So you would use this formula. So it's a summation formula. So you'd be summing all of the coupon payments, and then for every term, you're doing 1 over R, where R is going to be your yield to maturity. And then CT is like your terminal cash flow. That's when you get the final payments and your bond value returned. And that's going to be to the power T, which is like your total number of years in the end. And what you do is you solve iteratively for R. So you keep trying different values of yield to maturity. So you might, in the previous example, guess by looking at it, it's somewhere between seven and eight. So you try seven, then try eight, then try seven and a half, and just keep guessing until you get to the point where the right-hand side of the equation for your chosen value of R is exactly equal to the price of the bond. And that's the point where you found the correct yield to maturity. So I hope this video is helpful to you and you're now familiar with how to do the yield to maturity calculation. If this video was helpful, please like and subscribe below. And finally, thank you very much for watching.